Welcome everyone to today's webinar at Foch University. My name is Melissa Abache. I am the Director of International Student Recruitment here at Foch University. Our scheduled webinar for today uh, is a sample lecture from our Master's in Law, LLM in Public Law with Professor Bertil Emra Oder. I have some unfortunate news that due to health reasons, Professor Oder is not going to be able to join us. However, we will be recording her sample lecture and then emailing the video to all of the registered webinar participants next week. If you have questions about the contents of the lecture, you will be able to send those to us. I will share the contact details where you can do this. And then we will gather all questions and all answers and also share them via email with all of, all of you who participated, who registered to participate. Uh, what we thought we could do in this time, and now that you have joined, is to share more information about our LLM in public law. For that, we have here the director, the executive director of our School of Law, Ms. Esra Ozjan. So she will be able to answer any questions you may have about the program regarding specific courses, admission requirements, uh, tuition, uh, enrollment procedures, and so on. I will be given a very, I will give you an overview about the program. For those of you who may be not so familiar, and those of you who have already started applications, if you have questions about that, we will have time to do that. We have approximately half an hour, so um, we will try to keep this to, to the allocated time. We're, of course, also recording this webinar, and it will be posted on our YouTube channel for Coach University International Admissions, and you can watch it anytime, and you will receive also the recording. So to get started, just a brief introduction about uh, our university. Koch University is a private research foundation university uh, in Istanbul, Turkey. We were set up in 1993. And in almost 30 years now, we have become one of the leading, if not the leading university in Turkey and in the region for the quality of our teaching, uh, of our research, and of course, of our students and our alumni network. You can see on the screen some of uh, some images from our campus. We have uh, several uh, library and uh, health campuses, but most of our teaching happens here, where you see on screen, which is our Rumeli Feneri campus, which is located in Sarier uh, on the west part of Istanbul. Istanbul is, as, as you may know, always described as a city that straddles between the East and the West, because we have one part in Europe, one part in Asia. Our university is located on the European side of the city. It is a very beautiful residential campus that offers all facilities to domestic and international students. And we have a very diverse student body that includes 10% that are coming from approximately 80 countries from around the world. Today, of course, we're going to be speaking more uh, specifically about our School of Law, the Graduate School of Social Sciences and Humanities, and our Master's in Law. So why are some of the reasons that uh, people have chosen to study their Master's in Law at Koch University? The first, and I think the most important reason, is our professors. Our faculty members are all internationally renowned. They are dedicated to training a new generation of lawyers. So they're trying to really uh, do something different here and offer a very hands-on boutique learning experience of small classroom sizes for a very diverse cohort of students who are coming from all around the world. The curriculum that they have developed is also very wide because it covers the most demanding, most challenging, but also less discussed comparative and international aspects of different legal disciplines. And we will have a look at what, what that means when you look at our curriculum for the public law program. Um, all of this is, uh, it's also embedded into a very international environment. So we have graduate students who are coming from Turkey, but also from a wide range of countries from around the world. And there's also a lot of academic collaboration that has an international dim dimension with leading law schools and leading law programs in Europe, in Asia, and the Americas. And I will show some examples next. It's also um, some of the reasons why students have chosen to join our program. It's because of the flexibility 
of uh, being able to work part-time because our classes are structured on Fridays and Saturdays. So it means that students who wish to do so can continue working from Monday to Thursday, either in Istanbul, in law firms or other organizations or remotely with their current employers. Our classes are offered on a modular format and that's why we're able to, to do this. And finally, um, we offer an excellent quality of teaching and supervision for students, but at an affordable tuition. And we also offer some financial aid opportunities to outstanding candidates. In terms of the research aspects of our law school and our LLM programs, um, students who join our program have the opportunity to participate as research assistants if they wish in some of the research centers in, for example, international commercial law, global public law, or specific working groups that are project-based and, and done independently by faculty members. And they cover different aspects, such as entrepreneurship, constitutional review and international human rights, um, gender equality, sustainable development, and so on. I invite you to check the websites of the research centers that you see on the screen to find out more about the specific research that is being developed at these groups. Now to talk a little bit about the LLM programs, we offer two tracks. One is in private law, the other one is in public law. Today's uh, information that we want to provide is regarding the LLM in public law. So if you choose to do an LLM in public law, you can do that as a master with thesis or research masters, which would mean a duration of two years or um, four semesters. And in those four semesters, you complete seven courses and you have to write a, a master's dissertation or thesis. If you choose to do an LLM in public law in a non-thesis format or taught uh, masters, then you complete the program in one year or two semesters where you complete 10 courses and you have to write a final paper, which is also a work of research, but not as extensive as a master's thesis. Um, one thing to kind of emphasize is that you do not need to know Turkish to enroll in our LLM programs because all courses are nearly all, all courses are offered in English. There are some courses that are offered in Turkish, but then you have the option to choose other courses that are offered in English in lieu of those. As I mentioned, the format of the courses is modular. So each course has a duration of six to eight weeks. The lectures are on Fridays and Saturdays, and you can also have uh, the choice of enrolling on elective courses that are outside of the LLM program, but that are offered as part of other master programs at Koch University, especially in the Graduate School of Social Sciences and Humanities in some of our other programs that can be in international relations and political science, sociology, psychology, depending on areas you may want to gain further knowledge or more in-depth knowledge. When we look at the program curriculum, specifically for public law, um, the core required courses for all students, you can see them on the left-hand side of the screen, are covering comparative constitutional law, specifically rights, institutions, and judicial review, transnational and European criminal law and procedure, European human rights law, and legal infrastructure of public-private partnerships. So those are the courses that all students have to um, take and pass, of course, to graduate from the LLM in public law. Then there are some common elective courses that according to which area you want to get a, a more in-depth understanding of, you can choose. So these include um, courses such as investment treaty law, um, international transport law, labor law, international tax law, international property in a global perspective. If there are some areas of private law that you're interested in, you can also take those courses as uh, elective courses, even though you're in the public law track. So there's quite a lot of flexibility in terms of how you can design the curriculum of your program, either over one year or two years. In terms of the admissions, we only have one intake each year for new students, and that's for the fall. The fall semester in Turkish universities, it's usually between September and October. Our applications open in February, and 
normally or typically close at the end of June. For this year, the application deadline to submit uh, your online application in our system is the 23rd of June. And you do all of the procedures for uh, your application online through the website that you see on the screen, which is apply.ku.edu.tr. The main principle behind the process of evaluation of candidates is that it's selective, meaning that our faculty members are looking for truly outstanding candidates that have a clear, um, you know, that have a good foundation in their uh, law uh, degree from their law degrees and also that have a commitment and a passion for public law in specific areas and it's holistic in the sense that there is the the decision to admit a candidate is not based on one single element such as um, grade point average or English proficiency or so on but it's uh, taken as a whole when they look at the information provided by the candidate what happens after you submit your application then uh, there is a short list of candidates. Those candidates are invited to do a written exam and then a panel interview that will happen on the 11th of July, 2023 for this year's intake. If you are not in Istanbul, you can also do that online and the Graduate School of Social Sciences and Humanities will provide details via email of how you can take part or how can you complete the exam and how you can participate in the interview. Um, about a month or month and a half later, you will receive information again from the graduate school about whether you have been admitted or not. And if you decide to accept or offer and join the LLM program, the enrollment period will happen in late September and classes will start at the, at the beginning of October. That's a that's a rough kind of calendar for this year. The detailed dates will, of course, be published in the Graduate School of Social Sciences and Humanities website. In terms of that admission criteria and application documents that you need to provide for the, the thesis or research LLM program and the non-thesis, they're very, you know, roughly speaking the same, um, where you need a proof uh, proof of your English proficiency and the eligible exams are TOEFL, IBT. For Turkish uh, participants who are joining us today, you can also apply with your YDS or Yokdil exam. So for uh, TOEFL, you should have a score of 80 or higher. Unfortunately, the IELTS test is not accepted in Turkey by the Higher Education Council of Turkey, but if you have already taken the exam and have a score above 6.5, you can include that in your application. However, you will be required to also provide a TOEFL test score later on. Um, for Turkish applicants, you should also provide your ALIS test score with a score of 55 or higher. Okay, This is only for Turkish applicants. Um, you should have graduated from an LLB or law degree as your bachelor's uh, level of education with a grade point average of 2.75 out of 4 or the equivalent in your grading system. Uh, so just as an example, in the Indian system, this means uh, 50 to 54 percent. It depends on different countries here. We just put in an example. This is for the thesis option. For the non-thesis option, you should have a, a minimum GPA of 2.5 out of 4. And finally, of course, include your university transcripts and diploma. We also, um, you can also include your curriculum vitae, your CV, where you can highlight specific strengths in terms of courses you have taken your, during your LLB, any work experience you have within, you know, um, law organizations. If you have any type of research experience, you can also highlight that through your CV. In terms of costs, this is, of course, an important consideration. And as I said, our program offers uh, a clear advantage in this regard. Our tuition fees for the upcoming year, 2023-24, for international applicants, uh, for those doing the LLM with thesis over two years, is $12,200, and that is paid in two quotas. So one quota at the start of each of the two years. And for the LLM non-thesis uh, uh, program students that completed over one year is the same tuition, but it's paid once at the start of the two semesters of the program. 
We do have financial aid or scholarships available based on academic merit, of course, and the successful performance in the written exam that I mentioned before and the panel interview. So the decision for this is made by the uh, program admissions committee, which is composed of, of course, faculty members, the program director. And uh, that's why there isn't a specific criteria, meaning if my GPA is this or if my TOEFL score is that, can I get a Y percentage scholarship? But the type of tuition fee waivers that are available range between 25%, 50% and full or 100% tuition for the master with thesis. For the master non-thesis or taught program, um, a 25% scholarship is available. And it's also based on, as we said before, successful performance in the written exam and interview and the overall application package of the applicant. Um, we're very proud, as I said, of the diversity of our student cohorts in the LLM program in the current year and in previous years. So on the map, you can see just a sample of some of the countries where our uh, students are coming from besides Turkey, of course. And of course, we're looking uh, to welcome students from more countries in the future. You can always get in touch if you want more information about whether there's other students from your country here at Koch University, either in the LLM program or other graduate programs. I mentioned before that our program distinguishes itself because of its international collaborations and opportunities for students. So as, a, as an LLM student, you do have the opportunity to spend one, for example, if you're doing the Master with Thesis program over two years, uh, one of those semesters, you can apply for uh, a study abroad semester at one of Koch University's um, partner universities in Europe through the Erasmus Plus program or outside of Europe through the Global Exchange program. And, and of course, on the program website, you can find more examples of who are our partner universities and the type of networks that we are part of. So I hope this information has been useful. Here you can see the contact details of, uh, you know, if after today, if you have any further questions, if you're an international applicant, you're welcome to contact our team and you can see more information in our international admissions website, which is international.ku.edu.tr. And you can contact us by email to study at ku.edu.tr. If you're a Turkish applicant or participant today, you can um, check the information on our law school website, which is law.ku.edu.tr. And you can also contact Ms. Esra Ojan, who is with us today as well, in case of any further uh, questions. So now I'm going to um, open the, the question and answer session. If you have any specific questions, I kindly invite you to uh, write those questions in the Q&A section of your screen. So if you tap on your screens, you should be able to see a button that um, allows you to type questions. You can also type questions in the chat if you're more comfortable with that. So we're going to have approximately, uh, yes, approximately 10 minutes for questions. And we look forward to receiving your applications, of course, in the future for our LLM in public law or in private. Okay, so we have started to receive the questions. Um, so I will ask uh, Ms. Ezra to answer them. So I will read the question. Can we still apply if our GPA is under 2.75? Um, and is GPA important in order to get a scholarship? For the WITIS program, uh, GPA under 2.75, uh, but you can apply for uh, an, a non thesis program. Yes, GPA is also important, but it's just a criteria to make an application. So as long as you have the criteria 2.75 and perform uh, successfully during the interview and written exam, that's what makes the decision on scholarship. So our committee evaluates you on the basis of interview and written exam, uh, not only on your GPA. Thank you. So we will wait to receive other questions. Well, it's a similar question. So which which GPA stands a chance to get a scholarship? I wish it was a simple answer, but <laughs> it is not. Um, okay, so I'll, I'll read another question, which is, 
I have done my bachelor's degree in law with 3.81 out of four grade, but I don't have an English test score. Can I apply? Yes, you can still apply. Uh, we will evaluate your English proficiency through our interview and written exam. But of course, at the end, if you get admitted to a program, it will be conditional offer. So you, that means that you will have to receive an English proficiency test score, a TOEFL or another uh, test scores that we we have in the list uh, in the first semester of your of the program. So it is uh, it is possible to make an application without an English score. Great. Uh, by the way, I see we have several participants from Turkey. If you wish to type your questions in Turkish, feel free to do that, and we can also answer them in English and Turkish. So, because we have a, a mix of uh, participants from all over the, the world. So. Merhaba Türk adaylar. İsterseniz rahat hissedeceksiniz sorularınızı Türkçe'de yazabilirsiniz. Ben Türkçe cevaplayıp ardından yabancı adaylarımız için İngilizceye çevirebilirim. Teşekkürler. Okay. So we'll wait to receive another question. Uh, so I, I'll, I'll rephrase this question. So the question was, how many marks must I get to successfully qualify for the scholarship? I guess I will rephrase that as um, what GPA would successfully qualify you for the scholarship. Yeah. I think it's about the interview and written exam marks mm. that oh, okay. mm -hmm. you're reporting to. So it depends on the cohort of the group, especially like this, every year we receive outstanding applications from all around the world. And depending on the, that cohort, the committee makes their decision overall and they, your performance might differ. I cannot say that if you receive 65 or, or 70 and you receive full scholarship, because every maybe that year, most of the students will receive over 80, 80 marks from written exam and interview. So it is impossible to give you a, a specific mark how to receive a scholarship. Uh, but I can tell that like we receive quite uh, competitive uh, candidates and you need to perform very well during the interview and it's an exam. Great. We okay. have a, a very good question here. After completing the LLM in Turkey, is it possible for us international students to work in Turkish law firms? So, uh, it's a very, very good question. Thank you. Um, so you due to legislation in Turkey, you cannot practice law just with an LLM. You need to complete your LLB degree from a Turkish institution. Therefore, if you complete an LLM here, you can still work, as, but you can only work as a consultant in, an, in a law firm. So it, you can't perf uh, act as a lawyer, but you can. We have a, a lot of international students uh, after completing the LLM, they work in law firms in Istanbul and in, in other parts of Turkey, uh, but their title is consult legal consultant. Great. Um, we have a question here. What if you have one course to complete from your bachelor's degree? Can you still start with your master's? So if the if the student has not uh, graduated yet from their LLB degree, can they enroll in a master's program? No, unfortunately not. They can apply if they are if they are due like the uh, graduation due is around September. Yes, they can apply and get evaluated, but the condition will be you know pro pro proving that they graduated mm -hmm. in the meantime. So if they still continue their LLB program, it's impossible yeah. to get an admission. So in order to enroll as a student in the LLM, you would you one of the enrollment documents is a proof of graduation or a graduation certificate or a diploma. So yeah. yes. Um, there's a question here in Turkish. Ortalamamız iki nokta beşinin altında ise programlara katılma imkanımız yok mudur? So wish, the question is about the GPA requirement again. Uh, if if you hold an LLB GPA score under two point fifty, unfortunately, we cannot accept the application. So you cannot just pass through our systems. Iki elin altındaki ortalamalar maalesef değerlendirmeye alınamıyor. Okay. 
Um, similarly, can I get a scholarship with a 3.81 um, combined GPA without English test score? I have done my bachelor's degree from an English medium um, taught program, and I have an English language proficiency um, test, I guess, from my last mm -hmm. attended institution. You have to get a, a score because it's a, like, it's a requirement. So at the end of the day, you will need to prove your English proficiency with an, a valid test score, unfortunately. So if you're all uh, non-native speakers, have to provide that document. Um, another question here, uh, which international universities do you consider? Do you have them listed? Like is, uh, then, then there's a specific university, Islamic University in Uganda. If you, maybe you can clarify the question if you're, if you're considering in terms of application evaluations, all universities of course are eligible in terms of uh, um, evaluating candidates in terms of study abroad opportunities where our students can go for one semester. There's a specific list which is published in our Office of International Programs website under institutional partners. We can I will share the link on the on the chat as well. Uh, your particular university, as far as I know, it's not one of our partner universities for student exchange, but it's in terms of admission, all universities are eligible for um for evaluation. I'm going to type in the chat for one second. There is another question here. What is the last deadline for all the documents? So the deadline for submitting your application is June 23rd. So in about a month now. Um, in terms of all the documents in order to enroll as a new student would be end of September, which is the end of the registration of all new students at the university. So I hope that I've answered that. Um, can PTEs or Pearson tests of English score be valid for English? No. No. Okay. On so, the top. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, there's a question in Turkish. Would you like to read it? As yeah. Like read properly. English education program during the hang university anlaşmalısınız. Eğlen yaparken bir dönem orada değişim öğrencisi olarak geçirebiliyor muyuz? This is a question is about an exchange of uh, uh, exchange programs that you can you can go for an LLM uh, for a semester during an LLM. We have like over 200 partner institutions abroad, all from Europe and all around the world. We are, and Melissa will give you a link. Mm -hmm on our uh, international pro uh, programs office so you can see the partner institutions yes you can spend one semester or two but after you complete the courses during the LLM so şöyle söyleyeyim bir dönem ya da bir yıllık bütün dersinizi bitirdikten sonra bir dönem ya da iki dönemlik exchange imkanınız var tezli programı ise iki dönem yapabilirsiniz tezsiz program ise bir dönem exchange programından yararlanabilirsiniz And I think we're doing very well in terms of time. Um, this usually doesn't happen. We usually run a little bit over time. Um, so as uh, just for those of you who may have joined us after the start, we were due to have a sample lecture from Professor Bertil Emra Oder, who is our Dean of the Law School and also a professor in our LLM in Public Law. However, due to health reasons, she was not able to join us. We wish her a speedy recovery, of course, and we will be recording her lecture next week and sharing it via email with all of the registered participants uh, who registered for today's session. So do not worry, you will receive the video recording and you can also be, we'll be able to watch it in our YouTube channel. Today's session we have also recorded and you will be receiving it via email uh, tomorrow. So that's, that's uh, the summary, okay? So if there are no any, so there's no further questions, then we're going to be closing today's uh, session. I want to thank every one of you who have joined us from different places around the world. I know it's very early for some of you from what I can see. Some of you are in the same time zone as we are. So we wish you all a good weekend and all of the best in your future academic 
uh, endeavors. And if you decide to apply to Koch University in our LLM program, we also wish you uh, all of all of the best. The best of luck in your application journey. Okay. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye -bye. Thank you, Asvana. Thank you. Oh, close now. <laughs>